Hello friends and thank you for joining me here at Non-Toxic Tom. As always, I am glad that you are here. I am glad that you have decided that you want to know the truth and that you want to see beyond the corporate propaganda. Lately, I've been thinking quite a bit about scientific consensus and the historical significance of such. I did a post that I'll link to below on Facebook, fake book, <laughs> quite some time ago. I don't know, a few years ago, perhaps. And, you know, if you're speaking the truth, things will not go viral for you. Your videos won't go viral. Your posts on social media, unless it's an alternative social media platform, won't go viral because many do not have a love for the truth today. Many have fallen away and this was foretold. So these are the times that we're living in. We're living in a time of great deception and I'm going to discuss in this video some of the ways that we've already seen this happen before as far as scientific consensus goes. So should we trust the experts? Are the experts people that we really should trust? Because many of the things that we're going to discuss in this video and many of the things that we discuss in videos and in articles really impact your health. And of course, this is non-toxic home, right? So we don't want toxins here. Toxins are toxic regardless of how they get into your body. They will impact your body negatively in some way, shape, or form. So what are some of the examples of the ways in which scientific consensus has not served us well as a society? First of all, what most people think of is cigarettes. Now cigarettes were literally prescribed by medical professionals, i.e. doctors, for decades at least, perhaps up to 100 years, maybe even longer. But it was only due to a very, very small yet dedicated group of doctors and scientists who were truly honorable that we today know that cigarettes cause great harm and they literally kill people. It's one of the leading causes of death actually here in the United States. Of course, the third leading cause of death is iatricide, by the way, death by medical mistake or medical intervention or medical product. Yeah, so on that byline there, on that topic as far as iatricide goes, if you get cable TV or satellite TV, most likely you see at least once a day, perhaps tens of times a day, depending on how many time, how long you watch TV every day, advertisements for class action lawsuits. Now I've received money myself in the past from class action lawsuits for pharmaceutical products. The testing product process is not rigorous. In fact, it's laughable. The FDA is in cahoots with the mm, cartel, let's, shall we say. And this is something that judges have acknowledged in open court. They've literally accused some companies as operating like the mafia. And these are the people who are providing products for your health. Huh. Wow. So the number of products that have had class action lawsuits when it comes to pharmaceuticals, countless, <laughs> most likely. I'm sure you can think of some that have impacted you personally. IUDs, for example, uh, many women have had problems with that, breast implants, and those are of course medical devices, not pharmaceuticals. But many pharmaceuticals, Provigil has had actually multiple class action lawsuits. Uh, Risperdal, there's a class action lawsuit for that. And oh my goodness, the glass lighting that went on in the world of mental health in regards to Risperdal is appalling. I had clients who were on Risperdal when I worked in social work years ago. Oh, it's a racket. It's all a racket. <laughs> it's terrible. It is truly, truly terrible. 
This is the world that we live in. What's laughable, what I laugh at, is the fact that so many are blinded to these facts and they still continue to trust the experts regardless of the wide range of historical facts in which experts have been clearly lying to our faces. But still, let's trust the experts. Well, let's discuss something else here. How about DDT? Now, in the 1940s and 1950s, DDT was encouraged to be sprayed on children. You can find some archived videos online from that time period of children being sprayed with DDT. They would run down or up, however your perspective lies, the road after these trucks spraying DDT on them. Oh, need I really say more? What about asbestos? Asbestos is literally still used in construction materials. Most people believe, because they've been told by the news media, that asbestos is no longer used in construction materials. Oh my dear, be ye not deceived. Asbestos is still used in construction materials, indeed. And of course, I'm sure we've all seen the advertisements for class action lawsuits in regards to mesothelioma. Mesothelioma is of course caused by exposure to asbestos. Still in building materials, hasn't been completely removed from building materials. There are actually many, many products that still contain asbestos. Heroin cough syrup. Hmm. Wow. Heroin. Heroin cough suppressant. This was prescribed by physicians for at least 50 years, perhaps more. For children, it wasn't just used by adults. It was specifically targeted to children. <laughs> Need I say more? Cosmetics. Now there were many examples of cosmetics that used uranium and other radioactive isotopes. <laughs> Apparently they made you glow. Sorry for the unfortunate pun there, but I couldn't help myself. So radioactive cosmetics were used for mm -hmm, at least 100 years, perhaps more. Um, let's see, oh, thalidomide. That of course is an example of a pharmaceutical that we previously discussed. But thalidomide, if you aren't already aware, in the 1950s, the late night, I think believe it started in 1956 through the 1960s, thalidomide was prescribed to women who were pregnant primarily, and it was to treat restlessness, sleeplessness, but primarily it was used to treat nausea. And these poor women and these poor children, they just wanted to sleep. Thalidomide is a sedative, by the way. They, these women just wanted to sleep and they wanted to not have morning sickness anymore. They wanted to treat the morning sickness. So they went to their doctor and their doctor prescribed thalidomide. What did the thalidomide do? Caused unspeakable birth defects in children. Truly, truly terrible. And I want to say it was prescribed for about 10 years, maybe even longer for that specific purpose. One thing that you won't hear from anybody else is natural rubber latex. Natural rubber latex is in over 40,000 products. Now, just because something is natural doesn't mean that it's safe. Asbestos is actually natural. Uranium and radium are natural. Uh, what are some other examples? Poison ivy. Would you allow your children to roll around in poison ivy? I would hope not. What about mushrooms? There are many poisonous mushrooms that have killed people because they didn't know what they were eating. Even the mushroom experts, the expert mycologists, they, when they are mushroom hunting, will avoid LBMs, little brown mushrooms, because they're so difficult to identify. And some are poisonous, some can kill, and there are some plants as well as you learn about foraging, which I encourage. I encourage this book right here, Midwest Foraging. It is an excellent book. I know I talk about it all the time. I use it all the time. It has saved me so much money. 
in actually my primary medication that I use is God's natural medicine and I found it using this but even if you don't live in the Midwest there are many varieties that live across or grow across the country so natural rubber latex as I've already mentioned just because something is natural doesn't mean it's safe now natural rubber latex from the start the sap of the latex tree the natural rubber tree that latex is known to be toxic the latex in and of itself the source material is known to be toxic so what happens is this and we're gonna let's let's go let's talk about certified organic natural rubber latex here okay certified organic natural rubber latex starts out toxic all right so they add specific chemicals and the last time I looked there were up to 2,000 potential chemicals that can be used and still be considered certifiable as organic they add up to 2,000 different chemicals they produce so much pollution in processing the latex from a sap into a workable product it's mind-blowing but it's natural just because it's natural doesn't mean it's safe it doesn't mean it's good these chemicals the vast majority of them haven't been studied how are they certifiable as organic it shouldn't be the case but that's how it is everything's a racket follow the money so you can't take something that is known to be toxic add what is most likely toxic chemicals and end up with a non-toxic product but that's what we're told now if you don't believe me I don't expect you to do your research go to PubMed put in latex toxic you'll find ample evidence my dear ample old pressure treated wood now back in 2003 I believe it was when the pressure treated wood transitioned as far as the chemicals go they were finally banned there were so many families who had children die of cancer because they played on play sets that were treated with the old pressure treated wood chemicals now I'm not saying that pressure treated wood today is safe let me be clear here that is not my statement whatsoever I am not suggesting that pressure treated wood as it is today in 2021 is safe and non-toxic that is not my statement however the old pressure treated wood which I believe came around in 1930 was treated by and I want to I wrote this down I wanted to be sure I got it exactly right chromated copper arsenate arsenate it's also referred to as CCA and of course if you listen to that last word arsenate arsenic <sighs> so many children ended up with arsenic poisoning and other problems that were completely avoidable they knew that this was a problem for decades but why did it take so long for it to be addressed legally here in the United States why didn't the lawmakers do something about it sooner why didn't the in industry step in to its own producers and manufacturers why didn't the why didn't they do something why didn't they change it if they knew for so long just like cigarettes follow the money as of 2003 or maybe it was 2002 it was a four billion dollar a year industry four billion dollars and that of course was quite some time ago so in today's money it's a lot more than four billion dollars that's why it happened cigarettes same thing follow the money I know we say this and we've used hashtags quite frequently stating follow the money but the love of money is the root of all evil in this wicked 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 world which deserves to be judged and is being judged as we speak there is of course one way to ensure your eternity and we discuss that in many other videos 
because of the times that we're living in, it is nigh on impossible for us to do a video and not mention our faith. But the fact of the matter is that just because something is decided upon by the experts or a scientific consensus to be true, factual, or accurate is never indicative that it is so. In fact, historically speaking, the popularity of an opinion is most likely the opposite of the truth. For example, if society in general believes that something is safe, most likely it's the opposite. If society in general believes that something is healthy because the experts say it's healthy, most likely it's the opposite. Consider aspartame. The, the examples just go on and 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 on. These are just a few that I pulled out. Thank you so much for being here. Please be sure to sign up for our weekly newsletters so you don't miss new posts. Be sure to subscribe to us on social media, particularly Odyssey, which right now is our favorite platform for video streaming. And be sure to hang in there. Be sure to subscribe and please like this video. That helps to tell other people that this is good information. It helps ensure that this is shared and not shadow banned. <laughs> Thanks so much for being here, friends. Have a most beautiful and blessed day.